Hello, all. Welcome. This is episode 102. I almost said 1,000. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I apologize for we were supposed to uh, start at 6 here. I left an hour and 10 minutes early. There were two accidents, uh, one on 95. And um, yeah, but needless, yeah. <laughs> but needless to say, uh, we're here. We're live. And I want to welcome uh, Maestro Chad Belly. Thank you for coming on, and for sure. um, I appreciate you know. Uh, Glad to have you here. Yeah, same here. And Maestro uh, was kind enough, uh, literally with one day's notice, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he agreed to do this. So I'm grateful and thankful. Um, we're gonna you know talk a bit about some things, and then he's gonna do some demos and all that. So first off, um, again, you know, thank you for coming on. So uh, you know, let's uh, let's do a little. You know, we had John before with. Uh, GM Brian, so That's we kind of right. got your background on all that. So with, with this whole mess going on, um, what's uh, happening as far as you teaching, keeping things going? I mean, I've been doing Zoom since the start of the pandemic. Um, pretty much right when it hit, we we switched over to Zoom and and kind of I linked a lot of my groups, my group in Colorado, um, and that you know, and uh, my one black belt in uh, New Jersey, and a couple in uh, North Carolina, and they all decided, hey, let's just start, you know, interlocking classes, and that way, all the students get, you know, more more class time with different teachers. Um, and so, yeah, we've we've been doing that from the beginning. Um, I don't think I can stop soon. Um, no, I've been telling everybody, hey, <laughs> you know what? When this whole thing ends, it's not going away. It, it, no, not no, not. No. At all, it's not. I have to find a way to keep at least some of my regular classes on too. Yeah, yeah. And my Tai Chi classes are the majority of the people on my uh, classes are Zoom. They're not even here in this town or state. You yes. know, so they, I have to keep those on Zoom. I, it's. I, yeah. I think it's fantastic. I think you know what. I again, I you know, I, I've said this before. I think it's a great supplementary tool. You know what I mean for those. You know, during this time, it's not going away. No, nope. <laughs> and um, and all that. And uh, we already got some folks watching. Yes, if you are watching, please tell us where you're watching from. Julius, oh, my, uh, my man, Julius, Maestro Alvin, Guru Felix, and I think there was uh, Guru Terry. All right, guys. Yes, if you're watching, please tell us where you're watching from. If you've got questions for Maestro. Chad, uh, please type them in, and I'll be sure to uh, get to them. So, um, I earn that keep, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, so then, you know, besides that, let's uh, let's talk about it. you. Got a, you know, you got a big camp coming up. Let's uh, let's hear about it. Uh, Wow, folks, uh, those who jumped in, I'm sorry. I don't know what just happened there, but those who, but we're still running, so fantastic. I'm sorry, you were talking about the camp. Camp. Uh, so I run an annual camp uh, every year, winter camp, and usually a summer camp. Winter camp is always in Orlando. Uh, we love this spot, uh, Turkey Lake, Bill Fredericks Park. Um, we get to be outdoors, training outdoors, stay in the cabins. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a fantastic time. Um, and it's kind of grown into one of these things where I have uh, this incredible list of guest instructors um, who just started popping up. Like they kept asking me, hey, do you mind if I come to the camp and teach? And all of a sudden I have, you know, usually nine to ten 
um, just amazing guest instructors, and it's just kind of turned into that, <laughs> you know. And when did you uh, start doing this? Um, I started my camps back in 1997. 97? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that was the first summer camp, and then about a few years after that, we started summer and winter. Uh, we've tried to run four seasonal camps um, a few years. That's That's been tough <laughs> for four years a lot. Yeah. Um, but you know, summer and winter is always great, and um, uh, summer is usually out west somewhere, New Mexico or, or Colorado. I have a big group in Colorado, so mm. we've been out there a lot. Wow! And matter of fact, and you just you just had that. We just had a camp in Colorado, um, and because of your connection, uh, you know, on uh, FMA discussion, uh, we had Whitney Lee come and a uh, guest teach at that camp, and that was fantastic. Um, and she was showing her wrong. Um, or no, the she, uh, multi, multi style. Multi Doctor multi style was, was excellent, and then my students out there ate it up. They they loved it, um, and it blended in great with what we do. And so that's, know, that's fantastic. I'm so glad that happened, yeah. and that's what it's about, folks. You know, I mean, like uh, getting people together from different styles on here and uh, becoming one. Again, we have more in common than differences. And there's a pure example of that. Uh, Whitney Lee, who I had on, I want to say, roughly three weeks ago or something, um, got a hold of Chad. Chad got a hold of her, and, um, you know, and Maestro invited her to there, and she taught there, and that's what it's all about. Fantastic. Now, that, that, is, that is fantastic. And I want to thank you. Maestro was kind enough to give me a T-shirt. Awesome. And... The, I'm sorry, the Kelly Warden. Kelly Warden Travel Wrench. Travel Wrench. Those you carry, may... carry it with you anywhere. If anybody asks you what it's for, it's a wrench. Yeah, I got it. it actually has wrench, usable wrench heads on it. Jeez. And it's in the shape of a karumbit, so you can do all your impact hitting and hooking. <laughs> <laughs> and what I got you, you Fantastic know, piece. <laughs> you know, I bought this book, and what I do is anytime I see somebody that's in the book, I get them to sign <laughs> nice. If you I mean, keep saying this, <laughs> folks, if you don't have this book, a must, <laughs> must get. I mean, just you know, uh, GM brand, a fantastic job. So yeah, I don't know if you got a pen handy. I do not. Uh, is there a pen in the house? Yes, there is. <laughs> you run right into my desk. There's a pen in the corner. You yeah. see a whole whole yeah, thing full of them. We'll get him to sign that lab. So at this at your camp coming up there, what do you um? What do you try to focus on? Is there a theme? Well, we, yeah, we pick a theme pretty much every year. Um, uh, the, the theme at, say, this previous camp in Colorado was gr the ground game. So we did a lot of our ground silat, even a lot of the uh, uh, the BJJ that I've learned over the years uh, from the Gracies. Mm. Um, a lot of the uh, Filipino Dumog that I've you know, seen to. Um, you know, so, you know, we all... We always just try to pick a theme. The theme for this year's winter camp coming up this weekend is staff. Um, we've been focusing a lot on the, you know, the long staff, uh, walking staff, that. and and it's kind of interconnections. I know that one of the Brahms questions that he asked me to talk about was the. Um, I deal a lot with the interrelation between different things and how double stick can teach you things about a spotty daga and how um, knife will teach you things about your hands. And the staff teaches you things about everything because it connects you to your whole body. Um, it's really a core weapon. Like in order to use it well, you have to be able to use it from your core your hips. Right. And so it's just a connector. It's a connector weapon and, and it allows you to explore a lot of different movements and then branch off into the other weapons and say, how does this apply to this? You know, we'll, we'll show a little bit of that. Excellent. I'm going to have you folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, folks, if you have questions while you're on here, something you would like to see uh, Maestro Chad demo, this would definitely be the time to uh, ask. Alvin, the travel wrench is cool. Yeah, I'm going to find out soon, Maestro Alvin. Guru Tom, uh, GM Dan, Andres. <laughs> Good guy, is on there. Ooh, right. So when you um, as far as 
because I definitely remember you, you know, the staff. What other, anything else that you tried? Is that going to be just the team, just the staff? Yeah, yeah this this time, just the staff, uh, guest instructors. They're going to teach, you know, whatever their specialties are. Um, none of them are required. I do know a couple of the instructors, uh, Dave Orman, the Sistema instructor. He's going to talk about how Sistema, Sistema uses the staff oh, okay. um, all in training and how they're going to defend against it. So that'll be a very interesting workshop. Um I, I think most of the other instructors, I know Brahm's going to do Bolo and, and Blade. Uh, Bruce Chu will do uh, Modern Arnie's Small Circle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's always fantastic. And, um, yeah, it's, it's great to have all those guys together because we all, we all trained with Remy, me, me and Bruce. And, yeah, and right. Brahm. So you guys are just right. Yeah, so it's just it's, it's cool that we can kind of sit sometimes across the fire and go like, Wow, Remy's sitting up there smiling. Yeah, and, look at that. You, that you guys are continuing right, and propagating. Right. And, yeah. And kind of, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. It's always a fun time. We all look forward to it. Especially this past year. <laughs> we all need it <laughs> badly. Oh, man. And you know what? It was something like, when are we going to get out of it? Just like, you know, even though the vaccine's out and all that, but still, we're just like, my thought is we're going to get out of it when we when we decide to move out of it. Yeah, you know, like you know? when we just say, hey, enough's enough. Right. And the majority, yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> um, so now, those who, you know, about the camp and all that, now, this is a weekend thing. You got people that actually will stay. Friday, and Saturday, Sunday. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Friday is only a quick four hours. And then we do about uh, 12 hours on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then about another uh, six to eight hours on Sunday. Wow. wow, wow. <laughs> Man. So we get a lot of training in. It's definitely an overload. Um, I remember camps uh, when I was young. I would go to like the um, uh, Danny and Asanto camp camps, and they would be in Chai Sir and three. Francis Fong the and Larry three. Hartzell. Yeah. Um, and it would just be smoky yeah, mountains. Right? At the end of the weekend, it would just be so much of an overload. Yeah. I went to a lot of the Cortland camps of Kevin Seaman up in Cortland, New York. Yeah. Um, and it was just, there was always too much information, but that's the whole point. The point yeah. is you get overloaded and you, you know, and then you get overloaded. Yeah, again. it's funny because I remember uh, Ron Pascal, he used to have Larry up. And I just remember like bringing a notebook thinking I was going to get everything written down. And when you start to write, <laughs> man, they are on something else. It's just like, it's a, it's like, what really happens is you have to go to a lot of them. Then you start to click yep. in. Yep, but that's what trying, happens. But if you're trying to write notes and. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, good uh, good luck. I just I just found out it was like almost uh, futile. <laughs> just, uh, my my plan and it always worked really well was the first day I took an outline, and the second day I started to try to fill in the outline. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, it's at least just, then I knew I'd get something. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, you know, a couple more things, and because I know you got a bunch of stuff you you want to show and all that. Um, just before we get into you know, the show aspect. Um, what, um, again, you're, let's talk about a little about your system. Progressive, um, and I'm sorry. The, it's Progressive cool. earnings. Let's, yeah. So let's, uh, when did you form it? What are you trying to So in, uh, in 1992, I kind of left the East Coast to go to the West Coast for acupuncture school. And that kind of limited my training with Remy because he wasn't traveling to the West Coast at all anymore. Um, and so I knew I wasn't going to see him and he kind of, told me when I went to the West Coast to train with as many people as I could, to find Dan and Santo and Leo Heron and, you know, as many of the, the originals who were still in California as I could. And I did. I tried as much as possible. I got to train with Danny, with Edgar Salite. Um, in, yeah. I had a bunch of the seminars at the Santo Academy, which is fantastic. Um, so, you know, I, I wasn't with my teacher anymore, and he had kind of said, "Look, you're a teacher. Go, go, you know, teach our niece, and and you know, and, and create some students." And and I felt that because of all the other information that I was learning, I was no longer just doing modern our niece, and it felt to me like doing some of those things and calling it modern our niece was, kind of, was not the right way by, to go about it. By the virtue of what you've been exposed exactly. to. Exactly. And yeah. so what I saw a lot and what I tried to do is that a lot of those other systems took the basics that Remy taught and then they showed these progressions of how things, you know, carried on from that basic progression, progressive our niece. And so that's, that's really what I did. Was I took those basics and I said, this is where these basics go. 
in a progression from beginner to intermediate to advanced. With the, with the nucleus being minor knees. With the nucleus being minor whatever knees. other clothes you got, yep. whatever you felt. It was a For good sure. fit in there or what have you. Yep. And that's 92? 92 is when so that 92, all started. So that's, wow, and you, you formed that then and all that. Wow, 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 wow. I and mean, obviously it sounds like you've got a group in. Yeah, and I mean, I, I've been adding adding to it ever since. I mean, when I when I meet a new instructor that has something that, that I see of value, when I met Kapoi Kenyette in uh, 2006, um, I realized how much of a amazing close-range system he had and, um, and have spent a lot of time studying that with him. And then when he passed with uh, one of his senior students, Zach Whitson, um, so you know, it's it's always it's always an addition process. My yeah. well, some of my students from Santa Fe back in the nineties, they're you know when they see some of the stuff we're doing, they're like we never did that, and I was yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, that's because I had I had met I, Kikoy I, yet. I hadn't been exposed, <laughs> right? To it, right? I hadn't met Kikoy yet. So yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's great though. You're constant. You're evolving. <laughs> A lot of guys, you know, they uh, and I, I guess there's nothing wrong. I know that, but uh, I always like the aspect of people who evolve. Because they're always bringing something new to the table. And for a student, I think that's got to be like interesting. It's, I, mean? I guess it's your perspective. I mean, yeah. I, I realize that I'm I'm just a baby. <laughs> like you know, yeah, um, yeah. I might I might have been training for thirty years, but uh, you know, I've just scratched the surface. Yeah. Um, and you know, so there's all there's always more to learn. Yeah, that's that's so why I like having guest instructors at my camps. I get to learn. I know, like you can sit back and like you know what I mean. It's like yeah, yeah, by all means, like you're thinking like you're doing them. Like, you know what I mean? But really, in the background here. <laughs> yeah, one one hundred percent. It's it's a selfish endeavor. I, I love to have guest know, instructors at um, my camp because the cross you bear. Huh? I, I, it's it's a tough. It's tough. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. <laughs> it's tough being it's, it's tough being Chad Bailey. <laughs> we have concluded. <laughs> But now, I just because I want to make sure we allocate enough time for because you at seven thirty, you got something going on. Okay, okay, fair enough. All right. Um, hey, Frank. Frank is saying hello. Hey, Frank. <laughs> so, folks, uh, that's his camp. That's coming up. Miss Frank. I didn't get to see him last year because the Prey Sauce Hall of Fame was was canceled. Yeah. So now, no, just <laughs> for his future stuff. It sounds like you actually might be coming to my state, Connecticut, April. Is end that, end of April, I'm is, supposed to be up there for Brian Z's camp. Um, is I'm, it I'm is, super is, excited? Is that happening, or is it COVID? I, it's, you know? it's it sounded like it's happening. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brian, no. you tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I'm coming to April. I'm coming to uh, Connecticut at the end of April. Well, I definitely. <laughs> well, obviously, if you do, I'll be saying. I mean, obviously, I'm like, you know, like, I think literally like half hour away. And then there, he's got the big thing coming up. October, uh, Brom and Dan. I'm I'm coming up for that too, so I'll be up. Wow, twice. It looks like I might be seeing you <laughs> potentially uh, twice. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that'd be neat. Wow. Yeah, you know, and that's a nice, and that's the thing about this, folks. Like, uh, you know, uh, honestly speaking, if I uh, never came up with this show or anything like that, there's I, I would never met these guys. Not that I had anything, you know, that I didn't want to or anything. There's, there would have been a bridge, and this serves as the bridge. You know what I mean? Like, um, Maestro having uh, Whitney for his camp out there in Colorado and all that. That's what it's about. It's about building bridges. And, um, and Jay, you know, I'm getting you to one of my camps. Who's that? <laughs> Jay from uh, the Scion. Oh, oh, and him and, oh my I'm him and oh my god. I'm getting him and Greg to one of my camps to teach pendulum. Those guys, those guys are, yeah, huh? Those, wow, dynamic. That's a dynamic uh, crew there, huh? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna make that happen. Yeah, yeah, no, right. That would be wonderful. Wow. So, uh, all right. So we're going to, you guys, because, you know, due to the, um, the time strengths and all that, and I want to leave something for conclusion. Uh, Maestro here is going to uh, show some demos. Uh, what you have in mind? Um, I'll start with some of that integration stuff. Uh, we'll do some double stick staff and then the empty hand and show how it all integrates. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that first. And then um, I'll show some of the different flows, things that we've integrated and, you know, what we call... Uh, what I call flow systems that then build into sparring, um, you know, and so uh, in modern Arnis, they, they called that Dikadina or Tappy Tappy. Um, in Edgar's system, they did that as Lob and Laro. Oh, yep. um, there's other systems that do it as Palasut, uh, Pagamot. There's, you know, there's a lot of different flow systems um, that you can use as your as your uh, nucleus to, to play stuff, okay, you know, to sure. try disarms, to try throws, to work into different things so yeah we can talk about some of those too sure, if anybody 
wants to see anything, let us know. Yes, folks, if those are watching, if there's something particularly you want to see, uh, let us know. He's going to be basically can and will show, uh, sounds like anything or based on what you want to see. So I'm going to spin this around. And let's just make sure that you guys are clearly visible. And in fact, if you guys you might miss out on your legs. Let me just see if we... Boom, boom. Ah. Right here. Right here. That takes up. My back. You guys are good? Oh, no, the other one. There you go. Yeah, they're catching your legs and everything. So uh, if you want, I'm going to stay over here and I can... In case I can't hear, I'll kind of just basically re reiterate what you guys are doing over there. All right, so we're going to start with a little double stick drill called Quintata 8. It goes downward diagonal, downward diagonal, upward diagonal, upward diagonal. Nothing's crossing, everything's staying open. Uh, the kids call this the lightsaber drill. Like, you don't want your lightsaber to cut your arms off, so you keep it away from your other lightsaber. <laughs> Like and then we do that together, and it looks like this. And sometimes we do that with different footwork. It depends, yeah, it depends what we're trying to do. And then we're going to translate that. Uh, keep your sticks, Mike. First round, just keep your sticks. Five. Nice. And then he's back as well. And then we go empty hand, so same thing. And so empty hand application, he throws the punch, boom, so that's going to be a simultaneous block and a strike. And then we have throws, take downs from there, that do just that same motion, which is just that. That's our one, he throws that same punch. And I go on the outside, that might be an arm bar type motion. Same thing. And then come back to the sticks. So everybody knows kind of a heaven six or double sin wally type motion, just a heaven. And then when he goes to the stack, so, one, two, three. So he's doing the same motion. He uses the staff, and then we can do that together. So we can both. And that is, he throws a punch, drop, check, strike, throws the other punch. He does drill, dropping hands drill. And a lot of the translation comes in when I'm doing this motion. I'm learning hundreds of repetitions of this hand, and this hand is chambering and coming underneath of it. And that works. When we're doing, oh, there they are. When we're doing blade, he comes one. And if I check on top, now I'm somewhat limited. My knife's down here. If I bring it up high, I might cut my own wrist. But if I did my check underneath, now my knife's high. And it's ready to, to do this. You might be able to do from that position. So. A lot of those moves translate identically, and the reason we do thousands of repetitions of those double stick drills is because that's the move that I need to be able to do my knife. And then I cut, now he's gonna do it.
Oh, nice. Did you show? I just I think it'd be important for the folks to hear that that whole point to check when you're not cutting your own arm. So real close, Mike gives me the one. So if I check on top, mm. I run the risk of cutting my own arm if I come to a high attack. I almost need to go low because mm. my arm's in the way. Definitely, yeah. But if I check underneath. Now my knife is free to cut high, any any targets that are high because I'm on top. Vice versa, now I can't really go low because if I go low, I run the risk right. of cutting my arm. So it gives me the option. If I check on top, I can go low. If I check under, I can go high. So you want to have both options. And so that heaven six drill teaches all those options. I think that's paramount. Like when people are, you see people sometimes just randomly check. For, do they really know, like, hey, man, you just could have potentially just... 100%. <laughs> and I see it all the time in flow yeah. drills. And I'm, and I'm not against it because sometimes you're doing it for the pure reason of flowing and moving. But I still want to move in proper movement patterns that are going to keep me safe during a competition. God forbid if something... Right. Yeah, yeah. 100%. No, absolutely. Um, so that he same heaven six move that we were showing here, two-handed, that's that flow yeah. <laughs> figure eight drill it's the exactly the same thing as this heaven six and then it turns into this and then it goes up and then it goes down and around behind yeah. <laughs> and so that's all just the same mechanics as heaven six heaven six <laughs> earth six Upward. Umbrella. Yeah. So it's all the same moves that you do with the uh, staff, that you do with the stick, um, that you do with the knife. And, the knife and, the um, and part of what I'm always uh, telling everybody when we're training is that if you have a different movement system when you grab a new weapon and all of a sudden you have to use that differently um, I, I, I use the Okinawan weapons because When you look at the Okinawan weapons the Sai forms look different than the Tonfa forms look different than the nunchuck forms look different It's like they grab the weapon and it, it's totally new training Yeah. Everything that we do if you can do it with two sticks, you got to be able to do it with staff. you got to be able to do it with the spotted dagger. you got to be able to do it with the dagger. you got to be able to do it with hands because it's all the same movement. Rima used to say it all the time. It's all the same. We thought, and Brian said this last time on our last interview, we thought he meant all the stuff in our niece is the same. No, he meant everything is the same. All martial arts, all movement, it's all the same. Yeah, you, the body can only go so many different that's ways. That's exactly right. <laughs> no, no, that's... Uh, so true and uh yeah like i like totally like if you're if you god forbid something happened like you can't have like 10 sets of you know different weapons movements or systems like that i mean yeah, it has to be a movement system that's ingrained yeah. throughout all of your training so that that movement system will stand out and be active because if if i have a single stick in my hand but my head's in double stick land i'm screwed yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. but if all of the training is just it doesn't matter where my head is i'm going to be the same it's gonna it doesn't matter i can have a rock in my hand i'm still going to do our flexible or whatever right. Right, right, right. and i say this all the time at camp it's like it shouldn't matter if i have a frying pan or a saucepan in my hand and somebody breaks into my house i'm doing our niece with whatever's in my hand the no, saucepan, right, right. the frying pan and they're going to get hit with some redondo Frying pan style, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, you might be able to call that. Might be a new system for <laughs> the, no, that's not too bad. the Redondo frying pan. So, some of the flow systems uh, we use uh, De Cadena, uh, which we start super slow, just a four into some entries and some exits, entries and some exits, and I'm going to need to stay print. Yeah, you guys are good. And exit. And then it starts to get more and more complicated. We add in load systems, we add in disarms, locks, throws, takedowns. And one of the things that we tend to do through all of the flow systems is talk about the three C's um, cooperative, um, 
uh, cooperative, uh, competition, and combative. Um, so first round, when you're just trying to learn this stuff, you have to be cooperative with your partner. You're learning how to flow. You're learning how to go through these movements. Then once you know the movements, you and your partner start to get a little competitive. I change timings. I go places you don't think I'm going to go. It makes you have to adapt a little bit. And then eventually we go combative where now I'm going to change things up on you. And if I see a weakness, I'm going to take your stick, take you down and finish, you know? And so it has to have, be able to, any, even from a basic flow standpoint, we have to be able to have those gradients and say, okay, no, today we're not just flowing. Where we have to practice our stuff and mm. see if it works. You know, yeah, depending where the student is. You know, is. that disarm that we learned, we're learning last, last week, and we did it like this in class, and everybody said, oh, I can do that. But now, can you do that when we're doing this, and we're going on here, boom, and can I pull it off when I'm in the midst of motion? Then maybe I can actually use it. Yeah, you know? right. Within the, within um, you take a drill uh, from Edgar Salide's Laban Laro's Edgar love the umbrella, the Payong <laughs> clock. And so I always tell the story. The first seminar that I went to of Edgar's, he taught about 45, 48 Slavon Laro drills. And I, took, I wrote them all down and I took them home. Got home and I saw that, um, I can't remember, I think it might have been unique public, publications, had a DVD of advanced Slavon Laro drills. I was like, excellent. When I get the DVD, I got the DVD. 45 different. Lob and Laro drill. So now I got 90. I go to another seminar. He teaches about another 30 drills. They're not any the same from the first 45 or the 45 on the tape. So now I'm up to like 120. Wow. <laughs> so eventually I boiled it down to 12. I only kept 12 of his flows. And this, this was one of them. And then it branches into two others. They were on that third motion. I throw some punios. And an overhead. And the cool thing was is that I had a, a long time, years of practicing those drills as a template. Because when I learned them from Edgar, I mean, we didn't have a tremendous amount of time. And so he took most of the time to teach us the drills and make sure we had the template of the drill and were able to move in the drill. When I, when I got uh, Dave Gould, uh, Dave, to come down uh, for a seminar, he took some of the Lob and Laro drills that yeah, they, 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 they and, 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 and he functionalized them. Um, when did you have Google Day done? Uh, I don't remember which year it was. That's it, was it was a while, it was that's, a while uh, back. That's, not, that's my Lameco. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a while back. And he, and he, you know, he took the template drills and he showed us how you functionalize them. And how you turn them He's into sparring. all about Fantastic. Like, he is. Yeah. Uh, I can't say yeah. enough. On that. Yeah, for sure. I, I only excellent thing because that seminar was amazing because it really opened my eyes to, okay, these are just. The, he basically just gave a, a lot of attributes. Yeah, these are just the templates, and they develop. You, uh, you, help you know. de develop the proper movement, but then you have to test the movement. You have to no, change it. Um, and yeah. he did some real simple things like. Uh, uh, we spent actually the whole first day on just the first drill. Mike comes on a one and we pass and hit the arm. Pass and hit the arm. So that's the base drill. But you only pass and hit the arm if this is here and it's stopped. Yeah. Which is probably if I crack that hand, yeah. then it's actually stopped. I might be able to pass and hit. But what if he swings through? Boom. And I gotta just no, hit. he's all about. <laughs> what the, I tell you, the thing about Guru Davis. He will make the clarification and distinction whether the tip passes you or not. Yes, better than anybody yes. in my opinion that I've been that I've been in front of thus far that I've ever experienced. Or, or and then he would was. snap it, and he'd be like, "Oh, he's not there again. We got to hit mm -hmm. instead of try to do our our pass and our manipulation." It's like that is only there in the in that circumstance. That's if, awesome. You guys stop. So, you know, it 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 really. You know, changed the way that I looked at the Lob and Laros, and, and we've been playing with them that way ever since. And they're, they're fantastic. Wow, that's, wow. that's awesome. You guys have them. I didn't know that you guys had them. Wow. Um, so then another one, uh, Kakoi's uh, passing. So one of the thing about Kakoi's, all of his stuff is that 
you're here. Like, yeah. I can touch you in the face. We, we have no business fighting with sticks at this range, but we do, <laughs> you know. And a lot of times you'll find yourself at this range. And then we start going into four corner strikes where I'm striking and he's just kind of watching. And then he strikes and I'm just watching. And then I say, okay, I'm going to strike. And boom. And this time when he strikes, boom, I'm going to block it. Mm. Try to get into those blocking positions. Or when he strikes, I get into just checking with the empty hand, the live hand. So I'm not getting hit and then back to passing. And then from there, you add in your disarms, you add in your locks, you add in your throws, you can start different striking patterns. We can start going to town on each other, boom, 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 you know, and you got to start to try to field all those strikes. Um, one of the amazing things about the boy, and it happened to me the very first time I got to spar with him at the seminar, was I was here and we're doing all this, and I keep feeling myself get hit in the back of the head and back here in the, the kidneys, the boom, boom. Because yeah. he's doing these curving the strikes, short, which he was very no, known for. Yeah. And I'm fighting this 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 old little old guy, <laughs> and I'm getting the crap beat out of me from behind me. And I, I kept looking back and going like, who's back there? Uh, one of my, and it was just yeah. amazing. Was I've heard a amazing. very similar, uh, my JKD instructor, uh, who one, uh, was under Bastillo, hence the cut boy, Lineage, yes, and they known for the court to divide, like, yep, you know, that and basically, like you said, behind you, behind you, <laughs> for sure, yeah, for sure. And I realized right away that the boy never really ever did any disarms, he would always just throw us. And while we were in the air, we would forget to hold on to our stick, so yeah, he would end worry up about our break falling or falling, right? Yeah. And you know, and so I started realizing that he was never really doing any fancy disarms on me, he was just leveraging and throwing. And somewhere in that, I would let go of my stick. Have it in his hand when I put the ground, <laughs> and he would be laughing because he had a wonderful belly laugh whenever he would spar with you and get a good technique on you. <laughs> There's some really good video of that on YouTube. <laughs> wow! Oh, I got to look at. Oh, really? I'm gonna. Have to find <laughs> What's that? Uh, uh, what um? How about uh? I'm trying to see if anybody, everybody, everybody's digging it. Um. What do you guys uh, do? You wanted me to do it. Let's do one more. Grab a dagger. Sure. And, and sure. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you guys. Absolutely. Uh, so we do a, uh, a fun drill that uh, that we call pala soot. Uh, if you look at translations of pala soot, uh, a lot of times the word just means to flow or to continue to flow. And so we do a drill where you take any kind of flow patterns and you can discuss that with your partner. We're just going to do a super basic one, sombrata six. And you start with two sticks and you have a dagger somewhere where you can add access it try to leave it too accessible for your partner or they might steal it in the midst of this um and then we just start flowing and the idea is not for either of us to win the idea that you win by not stopping by continuing to flow and keeping it going so we do our sprata stick and we start our flow and somewhere in the flow i might disarm and now we're flowing but he's single stick he disarms now we're both single stick till I pulled my knife. Now I'm the spotty daga. Now I disarm the stick. Now he's just knife. He disarms. Now I'm knife. Now I disarm. And we're still back. Aha, he takes it. Now we're empty hand. And then from empty hand, one of us, whoo, finishes. <laughs> Who's barbecue? Who's barbecuing? Uh, currently, nobody, Brian. <laughs> that's sand. That's um, that's yeah. That's the uh, dust from sand. If that's what you're. Uh, <laughs> who's who's uh, yards here in Miami are a high percentage of sand. Who's, so who's my barbecue? my backyard's a sand pit. <laughs> Pretty much here in North Miami. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow! Wow! That was awesome. That was great stuff. Great, great, great stuff. What do you guys? Um, I, I, I'm just curious about something. Like, what do you guys? Um, empty hand against knife. Like, what do you guys? Uh, so we just did it. Uh, that was one of our themed camps in Colorado at the end of last year. Was empty hand versus knife. Um, we went through a lot of different uh, 
I don't know what you would call them, a lot, a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different viewpoints. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, Burton's uh, Knife for the Street stuff and, um, you know, and pretty much one of the things you see online and pretty much all the knife forums is, you know, is the, you know, the two hand control is that sure. at some point you have to get control of that knife, um, you know, and you have to stop it from, you know, from continuing to stab or continuing to cut. Um, so, you know, we, we talked about it and then we, we spent the end of the weekend, the, the last day was pretty much just uh, putting all the different theories to the test. And so each person throughout the weekend would say, oh no, I like, I like the sod. I like that's, that's my, my favorite way of doing it. And then we'd get to the testing, which some of it was sparring and some of it was more scenario. Like you're walking down the street and then somebody, you know, comes at you with a knife. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that stuff went out the window. Like whatever their favorite thing was, was mm -hmm. gone. <laughs> you yeah, know, you and they were back to the most simple thing we had done over the weekend, and that's what worked. Yep. That's what worked. Yeah. They, and we had practiced from that double arm hold. Sometimes we would do it with one grab and one press, one so grab no, and one press. Sometimes you'll do. So being a graduate of Burton, in other words, you're that in Yes. Or yes, exactly. You have you have to get both of your arms on that weapon arm yeah. to control it. And then we talked a lot about how, you know, the, the smaller women in class, how they might take down from those positions. And they got some of the takedowns when we went into the sparring and into the scenarios. When they got the double arm control, they got a takedown almost every time. So, I mean, that was fantastic to see that they could apply that. But like I said, I mean, everybody had a favorite. Oh, there's a, there's a knife drill we do called Call dog a progression and you can do that empty hand mm. some people were like oh that's my favorite and then that went out the window <laughs> um fa favorites don't matter it, yeah. it's what it's what you can yeah. apply what you can make work um you know we do the variations because i want everybody to see the different movements i want them to or see they can you compare know. and contrast that's right that's right but you know and you will find a crusada in a, in a crazy situation mm. but it's not going to be this flowing crusada that you no. practice in the drill it's going to be half a second and then you're into other movements yeah just for the folks that are what are uh, are watching um you know when it comes to when it comes to empty hand knife if you have an emotional subjective attached to something and that not and, and that's <laughs> not really been like proven and all that um you know that's what's probably going to get you injured or, or, or you know severely maimed uh, but what, do you like the bar? Do you like the double catch or the bar and catch? I, I like all of them because I think sometimes you have to adjust your position. I think, you know, if you get both hands on, that's awesome. But if I got both hands on here and I see Mike coming, then sometimes I switch to this just so that I can, you know, over, shield. Over change. Yeah, yeah, shield, you know, for him. And, you know, who knows? Maybe I'm just going to go like this, kick the back of the Take off. Which, you know, just want to have you because you mentioned something about women, and because I want to make sure we don't uh, go over. Because I know you got. Um, you know, what's your? I'm I'm, I'm going to actually give Whitney Lee and um, another girl that had on just to, because when it comes to women's self defense, um, I think it's you know, and I just want to you know, obviously your journey and all that, and you being teaching a lot and being close to different systems and what have you. Overall, like I believe. Whether you want to call it a tool or whatever, and I think that's fine. I think that's open for interpretation. I'm not really glued to one or another. But I do believe it, whether you want to use tool or weapon, I believe women's self defense has to have four great. What's your what's your, what's your what's your opinion? It, it has to just and and I think. I mean, it always is. If you want to defend against the knife, and you learn how to, you need to learn how to. You want to defend yeah, so against you, right. a gun, so you, understand you should go to the range and you should shoot a gun. If you want to defend against a stick, you better be practicing with a stick. So even if you're focusing on empty hand self-defense, for, for my women, I'm always telling them, okay, we're doing these stick drills because I want you to understand how the stick works. Now you don't have a stick, but this guy does. Now you know how his stick works. Let's do something about it. You know? And so they, they can change their perspective and they can go from that, oh my God, I don't know what to do, to... Oh no, I do know what to do. I just don't have a stick, and he does. And now they can change it. So, um, and to, for me, it's all repetition. Um, I used to teach these elaborate women's self defense classes. No, you know what? Then no. you know what? I I said, you know, we're doing ten weeks. Yeah. Each week we do one 
movement drills mm. per week. And we do thousands of repetitions of that one movement drill. And then the next week we do that same drill and the second one. And then we do that for all 10 weeks. And by the time they get to 10 weeks, they, they do their test where these guys are coming at them and they decimate these guys. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always fun. Like, you know, you, you, you get, uh, I get one of my students to put on like one of the red man suits and, oh, and yeah, they, yeah, you know, yeah, they, they do so their they attacks so that yeah. they don't have to worry about hurting their attacker and they can really see. Yeah, what, they can really, yeah. You know, and, and that also helps the emotion, uh, you know, because you have to put them in a, what is that, fright or flight, you know. They no, have no, that right. Dump. Yeah, I totally agree yeah. with you, though. Like, how can you, if you don't understand the offense, how are you gonna? How are you gonna defend? Like in other words, okay. like how are you gonna defend it against a tie kick? Okay. Like if you don't understand. Yeah. So I totally am with you on that. Like you have to have. Yeah. It's particularly for the consequences for major. They have nice. to understand power mechanics from striking and from a a movement <laughs> manipulation grappling standpoint. Um, not just not just how they might do it on somebody, but how somebody might do it on no, them. Um, yeah. And then they'll, you know, they'll have more of a respect for that. And they'll know that when somebody's throwing a kick, hey, I need Largo so that I'm not getting hit with that. Um, and I need to, you know, I, somebody asked me why I think we have a lot of women in progressive Barnese. And I know it's because I train so that everybody is working certain attributes and women aren't at a detriment in those attributes. So they feel very comfortable because once they get past their beginner level, most of the guys start looking at the ladies going, I don't really want to mess with her anymore yeah. because they're, they're moving well. They've figured out power. They understand those power mechanics and they're no joke anymore. So no, 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 no. that, you know, then it becomes comfortable. Um, you know, and I, there's a lot of other, um, there's a lot of other systems that, you know, they don't make it that comfortable. So there isn't a lot of, women I think, anymore. No, and I and I think they also see though, in conjunction with what you just said, I don't see they see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? Like with you know in other words like like you know, like and I think that's a derivative of, of like what they see on T V and like how vile the knife whether it be movies and all that, and then they see somebody that's teaching like and they're just like like they might not be comfortable to say it out loud, right. but in the back of their mind. So I think a lot of, they don't see the light. You know what I mean? Until it's like when you were saying how maybe you reduce it down to like what you mentioned, 12 things, 10 things or whatever. Yeah. And I think that's probably why you would be able to retain it. Right. Yeah. Keep it yeah. simple. Yeah. Keep it yeah. simple, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, okay, we're 20, I don't want, again, we're going to get close, I don't want, okay, we'll, just, we'll spin it back around. Spin it back. <laughs> But those are excellent demos. Thank you so much. And uh, I, don't know that. Well, I hope that was fun for everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there was. Um, just make sure I didn't miss any questions or anything. Uh, who's, <laughs> great connections. Oh, DM Brown. Uh, hey, John Kustis. Hey, Mark. Wow. Okay. Yeah, guys. So, um, uh, uh, Maestro's uh, camp. I might. Uh, he was so kind enough to uh, invite me this weekend to come up. But uh, those who live in the Northeast know what I'm talking about. We actually got shoveled like two feet of snow. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm here in Florida, as you know. And uh, I got my sister in law coming up. So we might have to head back early. And I'm, I'm going to find that out uh, tomorrow morning just because it's. We're really. Uh, she's going through like two feet of snow to feed the cats and all that. It's just not really fair on her. Um, that's why we live in Florida. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what my wife's been like. Uh, we're, leave, we're, we're leaving Connecticut. <laughs> so, but uh, but anyway, what I was good, you know, if I do, if it does work out, I was actually going to be showing Bert and stuff um, at, at the camp. So, but if if I, I would love to, if I can't, just a rain check next year. Yeah, please. Of All course. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anytime. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, this has been absolutely wonderful. Those of you just put in, I mean, um, Maestro was uh, just kind enough. You didn't, if you guys didn't see, to uh, give me a, a shirt. Um, just awesome. Sign my um, sign my book <laughs> again. To reiterate, if you don't have this book, I was really touched with that from, but put yeah. me in there. <laughs> yeah, and um, and you're really into FMA. This is a must-have. 
must 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 have. And he's the one who forced me to go through the grand master process with the Soka Shipka. Uh, uh, that wouldn't have happened without Rob. <laughs> yeah, good guy, good guy. And the wrench, travel wrench, travel wrench. Kelly Ward is <laughs> awesome. So I have to check that out too. But uh, let's get your. Uh, uh, hey, I just can get him in here. Come on over here, Mike. So we also want to give. Uh, Chad's uh, right here, Mike. Student who heads. came uh, to help with the demos, uh, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, do it, Tom. Keep it simple. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Gross movement. Stupid. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but uh, again, I, you know, I know it was short notice. I want to thank you for being doing this. It's awesome, man. man. Good meeting you too. you too. Yeah, absolutely. Great to have you here. In yeah, yeah. You're always I know. welcome. I know. Good <laughs> call. Again, I might not just be a. I might actually be. It might be a permanent mainstay. He, he's my liking wife, this weather. If my wife, ha, if my wife has her way. <laughs> yeah, Connecticut, man, it's just such a blast. You know, single digits, two Woo! feet of snow, taxes. Wow. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's just great. <laughs> All right, folks, we're gonna because uh, my show has a class. We have to. We're gonna check out. But I want to thank all you that jumped on, that commented. And um, I'll have this downloaded tonight. You can and, find me on Facebook, Chad yes. Bailey, on Instagram, uh, Chad B305. Uh, and then there's a couple YouTube channels. Uh, Progressive Arnese CC is the Arnese channel. I think uh, Sifu Bailey is the Tai Chi Chi Kong channel. And then there's a, um, a Bai Tui Na group, which is uh, my Tui Na channel, uh, which is Chinese Massage. Um, I have a bunch of different videos teaching you Chinese massage on the, on YouTube. All right. So, okay. Yeah, we do a lot of that at camps. Camp's not really just our niece. Uh, we start every day with Tai Chi and Qi Kung, and then we usually finish every day with Tui Na Massage so that everybody gets a little work, and that way you're ready to go for tomorrow. Because you know, when you do four to eight hours of training, you need a little body work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, all. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yeah, Thank you, Dean, for having me on again. Oh, my God. My Appreciate pleasure. It. My pleasure. It was terrific. I'm glad we were able to do it. Yeah. Please send me any questions you got. Love to hear them. All right. Always interested. Okay, folks. Uh, until then, until next week. Thank you all for chiming in. If you have not already, please hit like, subscribe to FMA Discussion on YouTube, where you'll see this interview and other great ones. Take care, all. Thank you. Thank you.